I'm Marcus Clements with Clements & King Insurance. We offer dental, life, health, and vision insurance for seniors. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Mutual of Omaha, Humana, United Healthcare, and other carriers have insurance designed especially for seniors. Are you confused trying to navigate the internet for your insurance questions? Call Clements & King Insurance. We take all the confusion out of your insurance questions. We have a friendly staff ready to assist you. Call today for an appointment. <laughs>
Keegan Rod. The mayor, I ask you this question tonight as you watch this mayor. Does this mayor hear me? Look at her ears. That's irritating. I want to do that. My wife says I'm particularly gifted in that area. Good girl. Okay. Good girl. You see, I'm a bit of a sexist, and I believe men and women are actually different. So give me a little attitude. How's that? But you see, this horse is a mare, and she's like many of you wives. When you ask your husband, are you listening to me? He repeats every word. And she says, you're still not listening to me. <laughs> Why does she say that? Because we don't hear with our ears, friends. We don't hear with our ears. We hear with our eyes. That's why your mother says, you look at me while I'm talking to you. <laughs> we hear with our eyes. And so our eyes tell whether we're valuing and looking and giving undivided attention to the one who's speaking to us. The Bible says, draw near to me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Turn both eyes to me. Draw near to me. Turn your full attention on me. Because where your eyes go, friends, your feet go. And where your feet go, others follow. We don't hear with our ears. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. You see this mirror's body posture right here? She's looking at her eyes, but her feet are like, I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. See how she's guarded? If I approach her, she... You see, she's talking to me all day long. Now the question is, how do I get the mayor to really hear? See that? It's like your husband, when you talk to him, wives, he's got his hand on the doorknob and he's got to go to work now. <laughs> Why? Because she can't afford to hear what I'm saying is, you see, her whole face goes, it's like talking to somebody like this, turning and guarding and looking this way, fidgeting around, playing with the keys, interrupting, changing the subject. This mayor can't handle hearing. Why? Because she doesn't believe she's safe. She doesn't believe she's loved. So she needs to take her body away from my presence so she doesn't feel threatened or afraid. Do you know what the Bible says? Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be envious of wicked doers. Don't look on the fence all the time and think, oh, if I only had what they had. You see, this mirror thinks, if I could only get away from this conversation, if I could only get away from this guy, if only somebody nice would work with me, if somebody understood me, if only it wasn't in a public place, if only they'd talk to me kinder. No. See, the reason the mirror can't hear is because she doesn't believe. What doesn't she believe? She doesn't believe that she's safe. She doesn't believe that she's loved. She doesn't believe that I'm thinking about her welfare first. She only wonders if I'm, she's a statistic and I'm trying to conquer her. So I rub on her and I love on her and I walk away. Now I didn't touch her feet, I didn't touch her hip. You see, God draws us. He woos us with the cords of love. Every horse I work with around the world, thousands and thousands and thousands of them, do you know what I know about every horse? you know what I know about this horse tonight? She's saying, please don't give up on me. But at the same time, she's yelling at me, she's guarded, she's pulling her feet away, and she's saying all kinds of conversational things that says, leave me alone. I don't want you in my life. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. See the back door, how she's opening the back door? 
stinking horse. Stinking horse? Doesn't she know who I am? She should have come run to me and bowed down to me. Oh, I get to work with Lou Starrett. You're not impressed either, are you? <laughs> she is neither. You know why? Because every night, every time I work a horse like this, no matter how many horses I've worked, no matter what money I own, no matter what horses I have at home, no matter what my title is, nothing means anything to this man. Except one thing. Do I love her? You see the conversation? She backs up, she crosses her arms, she raises her voice, she counterattacks, and she runs off! The stinking horse! Who does she think she is? She doesn't trust anybody! The Bible says, do not fret. Do not be envious. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust and do. Trust and do. Not trust and talk. Not trust and say you trust. Trust and do. You see, we don't really hear with our ears. We hear with our eyes. But the truth of it is, friends, we really don't even hear with our eyes. See, she's guarded, has her head up high. She's stiff. You aren't going to rule over me. And she's just stiff as a board all through her back, all through her shoulders. And she said, don't, don't help me. And as I get to talk to her about things more than the weather, she throws her hips out. She's stiff as a board. Guarded. Perhaps like some of you here tonight. I don't know why they brought me this stupid horse thing and then preached to me all night. You see, you have to understand three things about a horse. Number one, their face reflects their behavior. She's got her head high in the air. She's just arrogant and sticking her nose up. Why? Because she's afraid. She's keeping me at the mouth. Behind every face is, is a shoulder called an attitude. And the reason we have ugly faces are because we often have ugly attitudes. We say a person has bad attitude. We can't see attitudes anymore when we can see the wind. But we see the grimace of the face and we see the stiffness of the jaw and we say, Whoa, oh, I better not ask my dad for allowance today. And behind every attitude here, friends, is a heart, a motive. Now tonight, it would be my desire to ride this end. But the problem is I can't put a bridle on this end. You see, I can put a halter on that end. I can make this horse obey if I'm big enough, tough enough, strong enough. You can make anybody you want in the world listen to you if you have enough duct tape to put on their mouth. <laughs> but did you ever notice you can't make somebody trust you? Did you ever notice you can't make somebody love you? Did you ever notice that you can't make your children believe what you believe? Did you ever notice that you can't make your wife respects you? Did you ever notice that you can't make others honor you from their heart? You know why? Because you have no authority in the world over another person's heart. You do all those things, but you can't make your children believe what you believe. You can't fix somebody else. Only they can allow that to happen. So with this mare, I always walk out the face. And I talk to her. Why? Because she's afraid. Her love bucket is empty. She's just sure that I'm not here to conquer. She's literally, the life is embarrassing. But this mare wants to be found. A friend of mine in Africa was talking about, to the Christian community, he talked about the believers and the unbelievers. When he was done talking, the folk of Africa said, we don't understand your words. He said, what do you mean? Well, you use the word believer and unbeliever. We don't understand that. He said, what do you call them? We call them believers and not yet believers. You see, every horse I work with wants to be found. Though they may question me, they may snarl, they may be difficult, but they want to know that I genuinely see them. The psalmist says this, I love the Lord God because he hears me. 
Every person among us tonight, and we're all the same, we love to hang around people who give us worth, who listen to us, who value us, who focus on us, who make us feel important and heard. God does that. Do you know that God, when he sits on his mighty throne, the Bible says that he gets way down below his throne and he puts his ear to the, base, the bottom of heaven so that he can hear our cry. It's like you mothers when you have a big church and you hear an infant cry. The mother immediately knows it's her baby. How do you figure that out? Because you know your children. You hear them. You understand their needs. Trust is based on hearing, friends. Trust is based on hearing. Because if nobody hears you, you do not trust them. If you give a job for somebody to do and they don't do it or they do it half, you say, you're not listening. I can't trust you with this job. Why should I give you the keys of the car if you can't take the right garbage out? Why should I make you a supervisor when you don't hear the needs of the customer? And then this mayor immediately stick it. You see, what rules her life is a thing called pride. Now, you and I look at this man and she said, boy, she doesn't trust anybody. She, she's tough. I want you to understand one thing tonight. See the back door? Now, friends, this mayor doesn't smoke. This mayor doesn't drink anything but water. She's not on drugs. And <clears throat> she's moral. But she is one of the most wicked, evil horses I've ever seen in my life. Lord. You know why I say that? Because watch this. You see, you and I tend to label sins as murder. We label sins as moral violations. You see, this mayor always keeps the back door open. I'm out of here! You know what the Bible says about that? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have a back door. All are looking to set themselves above God, to make themselves the final authority in life and to reserve the right, to reserve the right to always be the final authority in her life. So this mayor sets herself above me and she reserves the right to pull away and that's what the Bible refers to as sin. Sin is not what we do, friends. Sin is what we are. This mayor never has to do one wrong thing to represent sin. Sin is an evil, friends. Listen to me. Sin is not the evil we do. Sin is the absolute absence of righteousness in our life. This mayor has no knowledge in my will. She has no knowledge in my word. She has no confidence in my ways. She has no trust in my character. She has no desire to please me. She has no knowledge of my plan for her life. And she's absolutely wasted when it comes to her being powerfully used for the purpose for which she was created. Sin is not the wrong you do, friends. Those are sins. Sin is the nature you have to set yourself above God and to build life around you. And you see this mayor? Stinking mayor. You pushed me too hard. I'm out of here. I quit. I quit this relationship. I quit this church. I'm out of here. I'm not trusting God anymore. I reserve the right to be God. You see, trust can never, ever, ever, ever be destroyed. Oh, look, you're going bonkers now. Because, you know, I don't trust my parents. I don't trust the government. Look at our government. I don't trust preachers, especially those TV preachers. I don't trust God. I don't trust my spouse. You know what? You may be right about those things. You may be absolutely right. It may be justified. I don't know. I certainly said those things in my life. But trust can never be destroyed. It can only ever be placed. You see, it's not that this mirror doesn't trust. It's who does she trust? It's who does she trust? 
And that's why the Bible says trust in the Lord. Trust in God. Why? Because all other gods, all other trust is a lie. But here's the deal, folks. You can only trust. You can only trust what you know. You see, I know many of you out there are, are very qualified horse people and you're wondering what I'm doing and all this sort of stuff. And some of you are here for horse training tips. And some of you are hopes that you can throw your kids in the arena afterward. Let me train them. <laughs> One of you, some of you are hoping that I'll whisper to this horse and it'll be some kind of magic thing and it'll all disappear and it'll all go away. And I'm here to tell you that's not how it works, friends. You see, I'm not training this horse at all. I can't train a horse. All I can do is set a course for my life and for my hands and for my behavior so that the horse gets to know me. You see, tonight what I'm doing is I'm teaching this horse. I'm introducing myself to this horse. I'm telling this horse that I have a world that's beyond this fence. I have a world that's beyond her imagination. I have a world that's beyond her fears. And you have to get to know me to leave your little world and to trust and to enter into my world, which is a higher world, a higher calling. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I'm out of here. Sin. You see, there are only three things that destroy a person. Sin, iniquity, or trespass. Sin is keeping the back door open. Iniquity is always running over you with the front door. Good girl. You ever going to try to talk to somebody and they always have their defenses up? They always change the subject. They always back away. They always scuttle into their corner. They always blame you. There's what's taking place for you. You're too aggressive. You don't understand. I can't trust you. Trust is a choice. Now, does it ever anger me or provoke me that the horse doesn't trust me? Of course it does. I'm never above that, whether I'm a parent, whether I'm a leader, whether I'm a trainer. I'm never above the emotional reactions of feeling distrusted. It's an offense to any one of us when we have the right, either by years and senior or seniority in the business, or by experience, or by talent. It's an offense to all of us when a generation or people come along and they somehow have the right to distrust us, to throw it in our face, to who are you? And today they're saying that about our Christianity, they're saying that about our churches, they're saying that about our Jesus. Who is he that we should trust him? What do you have to offer us as a church that we should attend your church, we should build our lives around your church? Trust can never be destroyed. It can only be placed. But it can only be placed to the degree that you know the person. I find it ironically that, that people who don't know God often curse him the most. But the truth of it is if you really knew God, not the TV God, not the religious God, but the God who left heaven, took off his robes, Step off his footstool, laid down his scepter, and entered, entered the womb of a woman. Entered this arena as an infant, as an embryo. To be confined, a God who was never confined in his life, entered the womb of a woman. To us, that's no big deal because we didn't have a life before then. But if a thousand days or a day is equivalent to a thousand years, Jesus Christ experienced confinement for the equivalency of 270,000 years to be in a woman's womb. That's what it felt like to God. He was birthed on earth, having to be birthed, diapered, fed, and nurtured like every other human baby, held or he could not exist without the protection of earthly parents. And this stinking horse sets herself above me and says, Who are you that I should trust you? I reserve the right.
to live my own life. Now, she hasn't bit me. She hasn't cursed me. She hasn't sworn at me. She hasn't struck me. She hasn't done anything wrong. The problem is she hasn't and does no ability to do anything wrong. Why? Fear. Fear always has the fingerprints of the devil all over it. Because we're afraid to trust God. We're afraid to lose control. We're afraid for somebody to be above us. We're afraid to follow rather than always be in the driver's seat. But the Bible says that he doesn't want us to be ruled by a spirit of fear, but he wants us to be ruled by a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. He wants us to have a spirit that allows us to cry out from our heart that says, Daddy or Abba, Abba, Father. And you see the head? You see this mayor has an authority issue? Not because she's been particularly rebellious, but because she's never really trusted anybody to be above her. So she throws her head up there and says, oh, I can't see. That doesn't make any sense. I don't like that. And this mare's a very powerful mare. So she runs backwards and she errs. So I just work with them. Why? Because you see, friends, we don't hear with our eyes. And you can tell by her feet that even if she hears me, there's no evidence that she trusts me because her feet always run away. She always has a closet. She always hides her heart. She always withdraws her spirit. She always punishes her silence. She always judges me in her heart but never owns up to it and never works through a conversation. She always blames and never brings things to resolution. Trust in the Lord and do good. Shh. You see, in order to trust, you've got to somehow believe that God is bigger than you. That God is above you. The Bible says there's one God in all, above all, and through all. Hello? Do you believe that? It's impossible to believe in the goodness and the sovereignty of God and live a life of complaining. Because complaining is telling God that he is weak, that he is impotent, and that he is not in control, and that life is mean and dangerous, and he ought to get back to doing his job right. Good girl. She always reserves the right to cross her arms and say, I'm out of here. I'm not. Why does she do that? Why does she do that? One thing, friend. Now, if you want to know what you believe tonight, you watch this mayor. Because you will all define what this mayor believes by how she behaves. You see, we aren't to judge. Are you an idiot? Are you really that dumb? If I don't judge this mayor tonight, if I don't make assessments on this mayor's behavior and on her attitude, and I simply throw my leg over, I won't live to tell you about it. One of the most stupid things that ever entered the Church of Jesus Christ is that we were to judge. Of course we're to judge. We're going to judge the world. We're going to judge our angels. We're, we're to be defined by people of sound judgment. The Apostle Paul says, In this I pray, That you may be filled with the spirit of discernment and that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless at the coming of Christ. If you and I are to constantly decide between that which is evil, that which is mediocre, and that which is excellent, and we're always debate passion about that which is excellent, we've got to make lots of decisions, lots of judgments. But you notice that I don't shoot the man. Kind of hard to get an owner to trust me with the next horse if I shot the last one. You see, I don't condemn the man. I understand her needs. I judge her according to her fruit. And I judge her according to her response because, you see, the mayor needs 
to work through the issues that keep her from resting. Shh. Resting and having peace. Shh. Only my word will give this mayor peace. Now, my word is not the things I say, friends. My word to this mayor is my actions as well as my voice. Because it's the conversation in my life that she's trusting. And she can only change and trust if she believes that I'm more consistent, I'm more trustworthy than everything else she knows. You see, she watches, she waits upon my example, she listens to my hands. She watches my spirit, and she rests in whether I'm trustworthy or I'm not. Many a man proclaims his own trustworthiness or his own loyalty, but a faithful man, a trustworthy man, is a lot more rare than most of us pretend to be. The Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, because anything more than these cometh of evil. And then we think that a man is defined by his word, a man who swears to his own hurt and does not change. When this man says something, he lives up to it. It's pretty rare. We used to have handshakes. We used to have verbal agreements. Today we have to have the contracts. And then we have the lawsuits. And then we have the prenups. And then we have the debates over our constitutions. Why? Because our word means to this point. You see, on my word to this mayor is one thing. Every time that mayor hits the fence, the fence never moves. You know why? She can leave me anytime she wants. There's a problem since I entered this arena, though, because when she leaves me, there is no peace. So I send her away. Watch her. I send her away. I send her away until she finds me. It's kind of like my wife. She chased me till I caught her. <laughs> Why? No always means no. There's a number of you here tonight. You're here of all ages, lots of different experiential backgrounds, probably different churches or no churches. But one thing's true about every last one of us here tonight. Every last person here tonight, you're all going to die. No means no! No doesn't mean you're stupid. No doesn't mean you're a failure. No simply means no! You can't buy your way to heaven. You can't improve yourself. You can't bribe your way to heaven. You can't power your way to heaven. No! No! There's none righteous, not one! Every last one of us are locked up in judgment and condemnation because none of us, none of us are faithful. Even Moses was only faithful as a hireling, as a servant, but Jesus Christ was faithful as a son. He finished the course. But not you and I. There were many times we get caught for our words not being fulfilled in our lives and our actions being inconsistent and for our convictions not being lived out as a way of life. It's a lot easier to preach it. It's a lot easier to expect it of others than it is to simply live it and model it and trust the Lord for His worthiness. But dear friends, do you not understand that if no always means no, Yes, always means yes. You see, the real issue with this mayor is one thing. She doesn't believe in Hebrews 11.6. I suppose she hadn't read it. Do you know what Hebrews 11.6 says? It says, for without faith, it is absolutely impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, listen to this, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Why did this man run away from me? Because she thought that the reward was in running away from responsibility. Why did this man obey her fears rather than faith? Because the reward 
wasn't getting in the way from responsibility, but rather fulfilling responsibility. Why did the mayor hide from me? Because she thought the reward was in doing her own thing, not discovering my will and my goodness for her. So she chose to only live in her life. She didn't believe that I was a rewarder. Now, if you and I are honest, that disease plagues every heart among every one of us here tonight, saint or sinner. You know why? If you want to know what you believe about God's goodness, look at your checkbook. Look at your daytime. Look at your priorities. Look at where your feet have been. Don't listen to what your mouth has said. Look at where your feet have been. And you'll know who you are. Because it's your feet, not your mouth. That tell you exactly where this horse is tonight. Tell me exactly where this horse is tonight. It's a good thing she doesn't talk because she would tell me a lie, but she would go that way. She would tell me you can trust me all the time, but she would always leave me. She would tell me I'm as good as a gold, but I can't trust her. Why? Because her feet, her feet don't follow me. We are immunizing our culture today to learn to say the right things. Because as long as they can Google it and get the right answer, they must know it. And if they know it, it must be right and it must be a belief in their life. No, it's simply they Googled and passed on to you. In our churches today, in our schools, we teach people, we give children a good behavior award if they say the right answers. Who cares what they say? It's what they do with their feet that matters. Because if you stay in the presence of the evil one and you talk yourself out and you rationalize with the evil one, you see, even parents today are deceived into thinking that they can reason with their child children into being good, and they talk and they talk and they talk, but their children don't move their feet, friends. There was a generation when you and I learned to move our feet and learned to obey because the doing of it was the issue, not the saying of it. And you see, when I get on a horse, the one thing I need to know before I get on this horse tonight, or one of you lucky folk get on this horse, <laughs> is that this mare knows what to do, not with her mouth, not with her attitude, but with her feet. She's mighty discouraging. You know why? Because her feet always run backward. See that? But not as far as they used to. Not as long as they used to stay there. So I began to reward her what? For what she didn't do. That's exactly right. Rewards don't start with success. Rewards never start with perfection. Listen, friends, if anything is worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Frankly, as I've met you folks, and I don't think there's a poorer bunch than you all. That's a joke. In other words, if you're willing to do something poor, Eventually, you become good at it. If you're not willing to do it poorly at all, this mare's hesitant, she's afraid, but if she's willing to trust, she's willing to take the first step, but she's always afraid of failure, so she always backs up, and it grieves me. It breaks my heart to watch people, to watch a horse always keep the back door open, always guard it for themselves. Why? Because this is a nice mare. This is a good horse. This mare has a great future. She's a nice horse. She's just useless. She's absolutely useless. Because the first thing you train in a horse is not their face. It's not their behavior. It's not their attitude. It's their heart. You lock the back door and move everything forward from that point on because from that point on we're doing this together. And she's always reserving the way. Now, just to make sure you understand, I like this horse. <clears throat> and I've just seen shooters like her. But you see, what's in her is in me. What's in her is in you. What's in her is the plague of our nation. You know why this mayor is doing what she is? Because tonight, this mayor is a victim. I'm too aggressive. I don't understand. I'm putting too much pressure on her. 
And some of you are out there saying, I think you're moving too fast, and the mayor needs more time, and you're in for trouble, and, you know, I think you're making the issues. You know why? Because we live in a world of victimization. <laughs> Where does that come from? One day there was a, an angel. Angels were created beings of God. And God is so holy that he required his holiness to be covered lest all that looked upon him would be consumed. So he had what was called covering cherubs. Covering angels. And perhaps some of you know more, maybe less of the church, but maybe more from a story of the Raiders of the Lost Ark and and uh, all that's Indiana Jones and all that sort of stuff. And you can always see the angels on the top of the ark. And they were an imitation of the angels that covered the glory of God. And so they, there were two angels. One at the time was Gabriel and the other at the time was a fellow named Lucifer. And Lucifer, and they always stood with their backs to God so, that you, so the angels couldn't see the glory of God because it was too much for them to comprehend or to behold Lest they be consumed. That's how God is full of glory. And one day, one of the angels named Lucifer said in his heart. Now friends, make sure you get this. He said in his heart, I will be like the Most High. I will be above God. But he never said it out loud. He never did anything wrong. And just like that, God threw him out of heaven. He was innocent. He never did anything wrong. He never got himself in trouble. Just one day, angry, old, impulsive, God threw Lucifer out of heaven and he was thrown out. And his argument was so convincing, dear friends, that one third of the angels took up an offense for him and went with him called demons to this day. And that is what's called a victim. Why is he a victim? Because Satan never took responsibility for his sin. He never said, I was a prideful, sinful leader. I said in my heart that I will rise above. He never yet told the demons his sin. The greatest plague that's sweeping our nation today is the plague of victimization. Let me make sure you understand one thing very clearly. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about one thing. From the front cover to the last cover. It's about one thing. You see, this mayor is a reactionary fool. She's a fearful fool. She's a self-protective fool. She's a blaming fool. She's a victim because she only sees life from her own perspective. And she makes every effort to live life around protecting numero uno. She's a victim. The Bible is one thing that he is about, is how to have a response, able relationship to our creator, to our conscience, and to our community. But you see, having the ability to respond rather than the enslavement to react means that something has to happen in this horse. That she no longer blames and reacts and criticizes and swears and curses. But she has the ability to choose to rise above that. Nice, look out. <laughs> How long does this take? Don't worry, we're serving breakfast. <laughs>
See how she's standing out there on that fence again? Oh, yeah. Good girl. Good girl. So we just play time for him. Why? Because we're cultivating faithfulness. When we're afraid, the Bible says, What time I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I will make a choice to not turn and trust me. Because I can't control the rope. I'm not above the rope. I will turn and cry out to you. Two years ago, a man called me and he said, You probably don't remember me. I said, uh, I, Your name doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> he said, I was at a university seven years ago when you had a horse just like this. And this horse was going around the pen, just as you'll see a little bit. And this horse was bucking to high heaven. And the round pen was a little like this one, only it was higher, but it had a little sharper divide between the gates. And at a full gallop, that young horse bucked and caught its foot between those two panels. And it grabbed that horse and it threw it upside down and suspended it off the ground, hanging by one foot. Horses, by nature, kick and thrust, and they break whatever bones were not already broken. And there was no way the legs were even touching the ground. And I cried out to God, Dear Jesus, help us! The horse never moved a muscle. We unpinned the panel, dropped the horse to the ground, checked its leg, finished our ride. The man said, I've never been in the experience or never experienced the presence, been in the presence of someone when they cried out to God in desperation. And he said, as I was doing 70 mile an hour on my motorbike, I went around a corner and hit loose gravel. And I was going over the edge to my sure death. The Holy Spirit of God brought to my mind your experience and your words. And I cried out to God in midair. And I'm here to tell you today that though my bike was absolutely told, I was completely delivered. You see, I'm teaching this mayor about what to do when you're afraid. Stinking horse always runs. Always runs. Does not the Bible says be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Why can't she keep her feet still? Huh? Because whatever is in your heart, friends, directs your eyes. And where your eyes go, your feet will always follow. Good girl. Good girl. Shh. Good girl. Good girl. What am I waiting for? For her to know what to do. When she's afraid. Now watch this. I speak to you as a dad right now at this moment. Why? Because you know what we're doing today now? We're practicing sin temptation drills. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? I mean today we have such a wonderful community service. And I, we have neighbors right over here. I saw the helicopter come in today when I was here. And that if you are dying, you can hardly die even if you want to. Those guys are so good at resuscitating you, getting to you, and keeping you alive. It's wonderful. Applause to them. We've got great firemen and great policemen and great medics and great emergency programs. Why, there are many a person today that are alive that would have died 30 years ago because of those medics that we have on the field. Unfortunately, it's all about the physical body. We are so good at saving the body. When was the last time you had a temptation drill? And you practiced what to do when somebody tried to seduce you 
when somebody threw pornography in front of you, when somebody criticized you, and you rehearsed it, and you rehearsed it, and you rehearsed it, and you rehearsed it until your kids were planned and prepared to know exactly what to do every time it came. You see, the military trains you repetition, the firemen are trained repetition, the policemen are trained repetition, so that when crisis comes, you don't think! You don't think! You see, we make all of our decisions by the brain cells on the periphery of our brain. But when you are so programmed in something, you make the decision in the heat of the moment by the brain cells at the stem of your brain. It's called rogue memory. And so they train every soldier what to do when bullets are fired at them, what to do when firing window fires, what to do when somebody pulls a gun on you, so that they automatically are trained and the stem cells here take over in their thinking. But we as Christians think, well, if I don't bring it up, it won't come up. If I don't try to seduce my kids, it'll never happen. If I don't criticize my kids and blame them and, and, and whatever, it'll never happen. Whose kids are you raising? I think we should prepare them for every kind of evil out there. Practice it. I do that with a silly horse. So the horse knows what to do with its feet. The Bible says an evil man, see, a wise man, sees the evil. He doesn't stick his head down and pretend it's not going to happen. Why is it that we have so many premarital Christian pregnancies? Well, we were planning that. Of course you were. Who do you think you are? Of course you were planning on intimacy. Because your feet took you to the place you planned to have it. What you believe is what your feet do. Point proof. What time I'm afraid. I will put my trust in God. But you can never put your trust in a God that you don't know. That you haven't saturated your heart with His Word. That you don't sit under His teaching. Friends, if your life is not filled up with the Word of God, I promise you, it'll be filled up with something else. There is no such thing as a vacuum on this earth. If wise people don't leave, fools always will. And if your heart isn't filled with the Word of God, it will always be filled up with self, lies, or foolishness. You're never an empty vessel. Stinking horse. Anybody want to buy a horse cheap, especially since I don't own it? <laughs> you know why I know this is a great horse? Because she's not easy. Some of our greatest people today are in prison because nobody took the time to imprint <coughs> their soul. It takes time, it takes sweat, it takes risk, and it takes getting over the discouragement. Because you see, when this horse runs away, you know what this horse says to me? I don't believe in me. When your teenager reacts and blows up in your face, do you know what they're saying? Do you still see any good in me? And about that time, it's kind of like when your wife says, do you still love me? You can't, and you're mad at him. You can't think of one reason why you still love him. You're in trouble, buddy. Big trouble. And when your kids are acting out and they're at their ugliest, people don't need to be loved when they're good. They need to be loved when they're ugly. That shouldn't be hard around here, should it? No, we all have a lot of selfishness in our life. Got to move on. Mayor's taking time. Time's money. Time's important. I don't have time for you. I wish I had a quick fix. Let's go down to McDonald's. You deserve a break today. This. The Bible says you will not win your souls apart from perseverance. The needed thing is we stand on the threshold, dear people of another global holocaust. 
You and I need to repair it with perseverance in our spirit, perseverance in our faith, perseverance in our relationships, perseverance in our witness, perseverance in our work. We stand at the precipice. We stand as the generation that every generation longed to see. And you and I are that generation. You and I are the people that every man, of, every man and woman ever born on this earth was waiting to see the coming of the Messiah. We may see it. There's a problem, isn't there? Look out, look out. She runs away, look out, stinking horse. The question is, is she ready? Is she ready? Are you ready? For the test. Truth is never trusted until it's tested. So I work with my mayor. And I put pressure on her. And she runs away. Because I touch some tickly spots on her. She runs away. Only to have to come back again. You would think she'd get tired of this little experience. You'd think I'd get tired of it. Oh, so much. Oh, You know what I'm doing, friends? I'm going from name, rank, and serial number, past the weather, and past the sports page, and I'm talking about her beliefs. I'm talking about what's in her heart. Because the truth of it is you can never harness a horse's heart. You can't harness this in. It has to be given to you.
Reward process, don't punish imperfection. Life is about process, not about image. Good girl. Good girl. Shh. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You see, what's an offense to me tonight is that I have a God complex. And when this mayor chooses not to trust me, when she chooses to mess up my schedule, when she chooses to make me look bad in front of others, when she takes too long, when she smells too bad, when she's dirty and stinky, she takes me out of being in control of my life, and I'm at the desperate exposure of an undone person. God made man in the image of God. And men get angry even with God because God doesn't do things the way men tell him to do them. To run their lives, to run their business. And so God, and this mayor runs away. Now, one question remains. The mayor's done a really good job. One question remains to me. Can I trust you? Can I trust you? So what will I do to find out whether I can trust this man?
This broke on her a bit. So she curses and blames and runs. How long will she run? To the pain in her life. Listen, friends, you're going to like this answer. She's going to run into the pain in her life. Causes her to humble herself and hear again. Right there. Look, almost. She wants a break so bad. But she thinks the break comes from me. She thinks the break comes from getting rid of the ropes. She thinks the break comes from getting out of this pen. The break only comes if this mayor humbles herself and cries out for help. And all the time I'm trying to draw her near to me. Does not the Bible say, I called, but you didn't answer? I stretched out my hand, but you didn't pay attention. You didn't want my counsel, you spurred all of my reproof. Four times at four levels I tried to help you, but you would not hear. You would not hear. You think I want to wear this mirror around? Nah. Tired horses don't even make good choices. Not my goal ever to wear a horse out. <laughs> But it is my goal always to face every horse with what they hide in their heart. Good girl. 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 Believing isn't always easy, friends. Even though salvation is a gift. Somehow it seems easier to do what this mirror did. She works ten times harder to do evil than she ever does to do righteousness. And yet one of the lies that plagues every heart in this room today is that God is out to get you and he will make your life miserable. Do you not understand, friends, that God created every sense in our body? I've never yet seen a horse say, oh, man, did you get a load of that sunset? Look at that. No, because God, God didn't make the horse to enjoy the sunsets. He made you and I to enjoy the sunsets. Now, I'll put that back on that mirror a little bit. She's going to van loose out of here. She's out to get out of here. She is a little bit upset, I think. How long? As long as she focuses on the ropes, friends. She's a slave. She's a slave of bitterness. She's a slave of anger. She's a slave of self-pity. Watch her. Watch her very carefully. She's going to come right in here in about two shakes. <clears throat> two shakes. You didn't get the cue, did you? <laughs> we always want something mystical, even from God, to fix a matter. The greatest mystery in heaven, the greatest mystery on earth, is humility. Humility is the richest, most powerful commodity that any person can own, yet nobody wants it. My wife and I have this little deal. Whoever humbles himself first wins. I told her last week it was her opportunity to win. Now, you see, I'm calling this mare in. Why? Because I don't want her on that road. But she has got to be on that rope. You can't touch it! And she's bitter about the confinement that a rope may bring. This rope doesn't hurt her one little, tiny, eensy, bitty bit. Now, I'm not saying with that the mayor couldn't get a little rope on. I'm not saying with that that, that the mayor might not. Um, but I am telling you this that rope doesn't hurt this mayor one iota. The problem with this rope is 
It touches on the issues of the heart that she doesn't want to trust anybody with. I'm Marcus Clements with Clements & King Insurance. Did you know that dental, vision, and life insurance is now available for seniors? Dental insurance is available through Blue Cross and Blue Shield in Humana. We have local participating dentists in network. Call Clements and King for a quote. Also, life insurance is available. If you qualify, life insurance can be purchased now through age 85. Give Clements and King a call today. We have all the answers to your insurance questions. Now, I'm going to stay with this mare until she gets it. Why? I am not a trainer who believes in punishment. I'm a trainer who believes in discipline. The Bible says that if you and I are without discipline, we are illegitimate. The Bible says that God disciplines those in whom he delights, and he, he scourges those uh, who are, he, he disciplines those who are his son. And he scourges those in whom he delights. What does all that mean? It means that discipline puts in the horse the things that are missing for their success. It builds in their qualities. It doesn't remind them of the past or their failure. It reminds them of their future and the qualities needed to be successful in that endeavor. Discipline is like the notes to music. Discipline is the skeleton to our bodies. Discipline is that which gives structure and strength and accomplishment to every person. Discipline is needed for us to be successful and fruitful. So I'm going to put this rope on her. She doesn't have to run. She may, but she doesn't have to. Why? Because she has the power to choose. And she chooses wrongly once again. So I'll turn her back. She runs it. Now that's what the Bible calls iniquity right there. You've seen what sin is. Now you're going to see what iniquity is. Here, if you Iniquity is when the horse runs through and self-righteous, headstrong, independent in spirit. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. All right. And give her a chance to have a victory. Watch her. Watch carefully. Because I believe in discipline. Watch her carefully. Watch her win. Good girl. 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 Watch. Can you harness a heart? Can you lead a horse from their hind end?
Good look at this crowd before I got here. I lost it four. Some horses are quicker. Some actually make you think you're a trainer. Some are slower, they're like kids. Make you want to sell your kids at the nearest flea market. <laughs> Good horses don't make trainers. It's the tough ones that make a trainer out of you and teach you and help you to work through issues and help you to accept the things that are hard to accept and learn. We all want good kids. We all want perfect horses. But you see, it's the things that are hard that make us really draw near God, make us cry out to God. It's not the easy things. And it's the things like this that we tonight really identify with in this mayor because, you know what, tonight isn't about me. Tonight is about this horse. Yikes. Oh no. I just need to know where the nearest hospital is. Okay, time for a little break and your announcements there. By the way, we have a store back there, and this message, a little shorter version of this message, is back there as well. And there's a big discount, but folks, take on their gift away. Thank you, Bryce. To hear and be involved with some things, it'll cost you a little bit. You put up with a difficult PA system, you put up with a horse that needed some extra time and encouragement to process some of the fears in her life. You needed to see this horse have victory. Good. Every year they make these horses just a little tall. You have to know what I mean. 
Can we just keep working with our mayor just a little bit? Because she can handle the steps. And when she does that well, what do we do? We always get back off. I apologize for that still popping. And uh, I don't know what to do about that now. So we're going to finish tonight. But you notice I always give the horse the chance to make the choice to follow. She says, Lou, I've blown it all night. I know I've been a mess. I've cost you time and money. You're probably embarrassed, probably hate my guts. But could you still use me? Could you still use me? And that's where we come to Jesus. I know my life is a mess. I know I have made poor choices. I know I have not trusted you. I have not honored you. But could you still trust me? to do the right thing. Could you still use me? Good. Don't clap yet. My life isn't over yet. Now you understand why I put that rope on her head? What's the first thing you do when you get on a horse like this? Get off. And teach her there's no fear of being above her. There's no fear of being submissive. There's no fear in being a servant. And you walk off.
Hi everyone, we are here for a wonderful, wonderful event tonight. We've got Mr. Bobby Jones himself with us and we want you to kind of tell us what your position is and, and what tonight is all about. I'm the Associational Missionary at the Lawrence Baptist Associational Office mm -hmm. and uh, myself and the Act 1-8 Committee at our office um, along with the uh, Lawrence County Rec Department uh, kind of uh, partnered together to bring Dr. Stewart here to uh, to demonstrate to us what God can do in our lives. We are broken, or we need breaking, we are unbroken, and we need breaking, and uh, we need a calmness and a peace that only he can bring about in our life, and, and a purpose that he can bring about in our life. And so we brought him so that um, he could show us about breaking horses, but most importantly, that he can show us what God can do in our life and how he can... Uh, take us and he can make us into useful useful vessels Amen. for his service. Amen. It's so, such a beautiful thing. And there's so many churches I'm represented. Yes. I mean, we saw Evergreen was here and, and what others did you see? Yeah, I know that Bruton was here. Uh, Papa Springs Dorothy was here. Bethlehem was here. Um, Marie was here. Um, just numerous churches in our association that was here, along with uh, some folks that are not involved with any church, mm -hmm. which is great. That was the whole purpose of us bringing uh, this event here. Amen. And so was it difficult to get him to come in? Because I know that he said that, you know, he's got to go to Tampa. To yeah. Florida, yeah, he only had like one or two dates. And and we, we kind of worked this in because it had, you know, all the events of St. Uh, Patrick's Week. And Absolutely. so we, we brought that in and kind of added that in to make that part of this week as well. Absolutely. We're glad that you brought him in. And tell us a little bit, too, about what you've got going on with the trip, the Mexico missionaries, correct? Yes. Um, I've been doing some mission trips down to Mexico for several years and teaching some pastors. Um, and the um, year before last, there was a, a small nine Indian pastor who came in. I was really intrigued by him. So um, this last year, we went down to the jungles of Mexico, right. um, down near Guatemalan border, and we found three tribes that had not heard the gospel. And so we were able to go in, and uh, we uh, have built relationships with them. Some of the chiefs, and some of the elders, and some of the people have accepted Christ. Um, and we are we're going down every month and teaching them the Bible. Um, and if anybody would like to help out with this mm -hmm. uh, for fifty dollars. There is a Bible that is in their language, right. and then there is a solar-powered, because they don't have electricity or anything mm -hmm. like that, it's a solar-powered voice recorder that has the Bible in their language, it has uh, the gospel presentation, it has a prayer of salvation on there, and we're giving one to every family. Well, it's a Bible in their language as well. That's wonderful. Now, what do people need to do in order to contribute to be a part of this? Who do they need to contact? And they can call the Lawrence Baptist Association. That's 478-272-0361. Just make out the checks to the Lawrence Baptist Association. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they uh, put on there that it's for the Mexico mission trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be glad because we are still uh, carrying, we're carrying about 1,200 of those things down uh, in April when we go back and we've already carried about 15. We're, we're trying to do one per family. That is fantastic. Now, is there a deadline for people to, to be able to contribute? Uh, by April 15th. By April 15th. Tax All day. Right. Tax day. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Jones, we're so appreciative of all the work that you're doing with the association and, and how you're bringing um, events like this to help teach people about Christ in such an amazing way. Well, I, I tell you what, God is good. He really is. And our churches, all 51 of our churches are, are really supportive and I really appreciate it. Amen. Thank you. This is Bobby Jones, everyone. All right, everyone, we're here with a lovely family who just put, partook of the Horse Whisperer. We'll let them introduce themselves to you tonight. We'll start with you over here, Mom. I'm Melanie Holt. Now, Melanie, now, what were you telling us about you already, you have experience with horses already? I've been on horses all my life. Do you still ride? I do. You do, very good. Do you mind telling us who you are, this little sweet pea you're holding? I'm Sarah Baggett, and this is Laura Lee Butterbean Baggett. Oh, hey, Butterbean. I'm Kylie Baggett. How old are you, Kylie? Fifteen. Should have known. Where do you go to school, young lady? West Lawrence High. Go Raiders. All right. Now, we want you all to tell us how your experience was tonight, seeing how he was able to use the Word of God, and then, of course, to help tame this mare in her 
in her wicked ways of, of the pride and, and her iniquities, how in the world, did, how did this bless you all tonight? And what did you get from it? Tremendously. I got here at the end. I had it this late tonight. And what did you get from the end of it? It was tremendous. I got here when she was really cutting up big time. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been there today. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you? Were you able to catch most of it? Yes, we were here the whole time, believe it or not, with a little one. But um, And she made it through. She made it through the yes. whole thing. But patience, you know, you have to be patient. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not a quick thing. You have mm -hmm. to, you really hang in there. You can't just give up and... And being a Christian is not easy. Absolutely. You know, and thinking like as moms, you know, how we talk about, you know, our kids, how we really try to work with them and pound things into their heads to kind of get it. But it just seems like sometimes they don't get it. And it does require patience as, as parents. Like, look at little Butterbean right here. She's yeah, like, I've had she's enough. Had a long but it's life. definitely, all right, young lady, you're 15 years old. What did you get from this message tonight? Um, it's easier to go through high school knowing that not everybody. Um, is gonna be the same, and everybody's gonna take something different than that. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I've been working with a horse this past week, and it's taught me more patience with my horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the word of God has just spoken to me tonight, and I'm glad I was here. Praise God. We're glad you're here, too. And, you know, patience is such a virtue. And sometimes in different situations in life, we kind of forget about that, you know, kind of lose sight of things. So so being here tonight, having you all here, and being able to take in what Dr. Sterrett has been uh, teaching and preaching to us tonight has been wonderful. Absolutely. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Could right. I say to you that this is the young lady who is the West Lawrence Raider, the uh, mascot? Oh my gosh, you should have told us that. You're the one on the horse. On the the on the horse. Yes, so when I see you in the parade, you're going to have to remember who I am. I think that when I first saw you the first time, I'm like, oh my God, she's super cool. <laughs> she's been on a horse since she was about six months old with me. How cool is that? So this was awesome for you. It really was. Now you're going to go back and you get on your Raider horse, you're going to ride it even more so with pride, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we've been having such a wonderful time here tonight with Dr. Lee Sturt. We've got someone here who wants to introduce himself to us. He's not a stranger here to Dublin, of course. He's a he's a Dublinite himself. My name is Curtis Mormon, and I am from Dublin, in Lawrence County. Graduated from East Lawrence, and spent 20 years in the Air Force, working in the chaplain's office, and then I worked for 23 years at the VA Medical Center here in Dublin serving our veterans, and I am pleased to know that uh, these men and women defended our country and our freedom. And I'm glad to be here tonight to see Dr. Sterrett as he took this horse that he had never seen mm -hmm. and showed us the glory of God through a horse. And it was absolutely wonderful. <coughs> and I appreciate the opportunity for him coming and <coughs> sharing with us God's glory through a horse. Amen. And, and you out of the mouth of the babes, too. Yes. <laughs> you know, thank you, Mr. Bormer, for your service, for one. Yeah, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. And, you know, and there was such a big crowd out here <laughs> tonight. And, and just the message that you taught was so powerful. It was. It was. And it taught me that just as he show this horse, mm -hmm. you can trust me. Right. God shows us that we can trust him. Amen. If we take the time Amen. to say, yes, Lord, I am that vessel. That's right. Yes. And you know, I can, you know, and if you're, if you're, uh, you know, honest enough with yourself, you can kind of take something from this of, of seeing yourself as that mayor of sometimes being so stubborn, yes. you know, so difficult. Oh, yes. So I full of pride. Yes. <laughs> Arrogance. Yes. Deliverance, anger, mm -hmm. all of those things right. used to be a part of my life. But thank God for deliverance and thank God yes. for, for him showing you and, of course, showing me and the people out there that yes. have received that um, the way. Yes. And it's an everyday process, it, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's, it's a process. And it won't end until that day. Amen. Yes. Because we're forever learning, we're forever growing. 
even though with you, you've been in ministry for so many years, yes. it's still a learning process of because we have to take things one day at a time, and there's so many different situations in life that we yeah. experience. Yes. Are you a parent? I know as a parent. I am a parent. I, I, uh, I've got three. Grandparent. <laughs> I have seven grandchildren. Seven, seven grandchildren. So you yeah. know how it is sometimes yes. when we yes. want to um, lead by example and steer yes. them into the right way and direction. Absolutely. And sometimes they buck against it. Oh, they do. <laughs> they do. But then God gets a hold of them somehow and they turn out right. My son is a, an ordained Baptist minister at a church in Oakland, Maryland. Wow, I know, yes. you know you're so proud of him. And, and he has five children. <laughs> and I have a daughter who is a marine biologist stationed in Charleston. So how And nice. she is a Christian. And, and uh, I see them mm -hmm. as a product right. that could have been different. Mm -hmm. Because of society, perhaps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the deliverance Amen. from God. Amen. Yes. And you and train them. You all train them in the way that they should go. In the way that they should go. So praise God for that. Praise God. Yes. All right. Pleasure Absolutely. to meet you, and thank you Pleasure so much. You. Thank, thank you. you. This is Mr. Mormon, everyone. And thank you for being the kind of person that you are in Jesus' name. Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Mormon. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the horse whisperer himself, Dr. Lee Sterrett. How are you? Lou. Lou Sterrett. Right. There we go. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thank you, Pat. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself and how this journey has been for you through the years. It's been an extremely interesting journey. I would never have thought that I'd be doing what I'm doing today. Uh, we travel all over the world. Uh, we go in every venue from universities to corporations to family groups and to individuals. But what happened is I began to learn some lessons about my own heart, my own life, through the language of the horse. And I thought it was just for me, but I realized if it meant something for me, it probably helped somebody else. So I started sharing with young people, and before I knew it, it got it way out of hand. Wow. Now, you know, what's beautiful about this, I was listening to some of the crowd, you know, as they mm -hmm. were, and, you know, and they said, well, I can see myself in this horse. I can see myself, you know, being rebellious. Um, when did you, how long have you been doing this? And and why, and you know, it's like, you, you're a counselor by trade, mm -hmm. because it was very therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> I won't charge you, you for that. Can, I mean, you yeah, know, you, right. if you charge by the hour, you're very <laughs> therapeutic. Um, have you always worked with horses or animals or, because I know with your degree. Yes, I was an animal science major originally. So right. Studying to be a veterinarian. And God got a hold of my heart and helped me to see some things that would be more meaningful with my life and giftings and those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I actually was the first guy that God spoke to through a horse. I think it was the donkey with Balaam, but for me, <laughs> it was a horse, and I began to see my own heart in that horse. The horse wasn't rebellious, but the mm -hmm. horse had attitude issues, and I said, oh, man, wow. I'm measured by that. And I think we all are. And, and it's, you know, the beautiful thing is, you know, when people come up to you and they tell you what they're receiving from this and how it blessed them. Mm -hmm. How many days of the year are you away doing this type of ministry? Well, I've been doing about 150 presentations for 40 years. Wow. And you're not tired? And I've never, <laughs> I've never missed a meeting, thank the Lord. That is I've been in blessing. rain and cold, and I wished I would have canceled a lot, <laughs> believe me. Tonight might have been one of those, you know. But you know, it's, it's the faithfulness of God. It really is. And you know, it's amazing how the Lord is able to use so many different venues and, and, and the creativity of, of ministry to reach souls. Oh yeah. Do you know, one of the great proofs that he loves us specifically is mm -hmm. that he speaks to us in our language. Mm -hmm. Tonight this language will reach some people that would never be reached in another by a mechanic or a, a tech or right. somebody or mm -hmm. an academia or something like that. But this language was, and that's how God loves us. He speaks individually to us. Absolutely. And you talk about how it's reaching different people where it normally would not reach. And this would even reach the unchurched. It's not about church. It's yeah. not about religion. It's mm -hmm. about relationship. And, and it's about life. Mm -hmm. And all of us do life. And you said it's not about, you know, hearing. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, to explain that to well, us. Well, we think we hear because we hear with our ears. Right. But the proof is we really don't hear until it changes the pattern of our behavior. And, the of our and I listen to that. And, that you know, that, that measures me pretty small sometimes. I, that's, that's pretty yeah. awesome because I heard it the first time. But then you did a repetition of it, and then it really made me think to where I was able to absorb it. I'm like, that is so true. We think because we can quote a certain doctrine or we can preach pretty loud that we actually live that. Yeah. 
but the people around us know that we are have hypocrisy in our life. Uh, yes, and you know, and a lot of times it's kind of disheartening um, to Christians who are really serving God to see the hypocrisy in so many people's lives, and the people who are the unsaved ones, they notice that, and so it's so such a deterrent. Yeah. You know, a man said to me the other day, I would never go to the church, it's full of hypocrites. I said, it is not. There's always room for one more. <laughs> <laughs> You're a comedian. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got to keep this audience alive. That's a lot of work out there for two hours. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Uh, and I'm going to ask you. But you know, that's the fun. That's, we, this was a night together. Yes, it wasn't it was. me talking to them. This is a community night. It was great. This is what we're missing in our communities. Absolutely. I want to ask you this from a, a, the theatrical part of me. <laughs> This show was probably over two hours long. You had such a control in your voice. Um, the cadence was pretty amazing. Um, how do you keep your voice, you know, like for me to go on stage, I have to prepare my voice. How do you keep your voice well? Because you're constantly... I am. I, sometimes I'll talk for eight hours a day. So it's a lot of voice. Uh, I learned a long time ago to use my stomach more in projection. Mm -hmm. Yes. And... Um, God has blessed me with some strengths, and those, those are part of it. But, you know, learning how to speak uh, was a very painful struggle for me. <laughs> I pity the people that taught me along the way and put up with but me. But look, what, yeah. look at the, the fruit that's been bared from that. Well, you know, you, you watch and you learn, and, and what you really want to do is love your audience. Mm -hmm. And loving an audience, one of the first great efforts of loving an audience is speaking their language. You know mm -hmm. that Jesus who could have wowed any audience and intimidated anybody he wants. Seventy yeah. percent of his words were two-syllable words. Why? He wanted to empower his people. He wanted to engage them. Mm -hmm. And I want to love these people. I don't want to impress them. But you did, though. Only because we're really common. <laughs> that's, that's why we're, we're, you know, that guy knows right. where I live. He knows right. what's in my heart. Right, right. Because that's when you, when God lets you know your own heart, you eventually have a key to every man's heart in the world. Yeah. That's, That's a beautiful. wonderful bridge. That is a wonderful bridge. Now, tell us about your co-star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even these, know her name. You don't even uh, know her. And, you uh, know, I mean, so how are these horses chosen? Because you get them, this is your, like, first time meeting the horses? Or? Uh, almost always. It's my first acquaintances at the arena. When the horse is brought, I, I try to get them an hour ahead of time so that I make sure that they're on time and I can get boots on them and make sure they get comfort with their surroundings a little right. bit. But uh, for this kind of a program, I want... A horse that's not been ridden, not been around pen, never saddled, that kind of thing. So I can be pretty genuine with my audience. Mm -hmm. Some horses are more domestic than others. So they're, right. they're quiet or tamer. And they she, didn't was, she was not domestic. No, she, <laughs> she comes from a larger ranch, and, mm -hmm. and they don't have the time to just fool with these horses like right. that. So she doesn't get the pampering. And you could see that because she was more guarded. She was more wild she in her really nature. She really was. Which is great because that's where our culture really is. Mm -hmm. Now, this is only one kind of presentation. We, do. we don't do this presentation. Tomorrow night it will be on the four greatest secrets of the riches in the world. Oh, wow. And it's different horses. Mm -hmm. It would be my two horses. I didn't bring them up tonight. I left them in Tampa. Right. And then uh, Saturday is a total, it's stud talk for men. It's about stallions. <laughs> you know? And we got to reach the guys. This is don't awesome. you think? <laughs> and then. Uh, Something else, you know, and, and right, we keep right, right. every horse. This is the beauty of every horse has a life message, and so does every person. That is so amazing how you're able to turn it that way and mm -hmm. utilizing one of God's beautiful creatures. Well, you know, the dog is probably the most loyal creature. Right. We wish that a horse was as loyal as a dog. She but didn't seem very loyal. Th they aren't. They aren't the loyalty that a dog is. <laughs> But it's not very impressive, as impressive training a dog, because it's mm -hmm. not, this represents a real faction of fear. Absolutely. What somebody wisely said, he said, what you have done is you've addressed uh, issues of risk in a non-threatening way mm -hmm. without assigning blame. See, and that's what gets us in trouble. I want to blame people. It's easier I want to, to blame somebody risk, else. You know, <laughs> and so this is where we all live. It is, and it was... I think that I, I believe that it was life changing for some people out here. And they, and they someone said two nights ago, "Wow, I never heard such a powerful gospel without any church." Right. No Bible. I didn't see your Bible. Either. It's right in my heart. That's what matters. Absolutely. And and it, it doesn't have to have stained glass, but we somehow have put this country club box around our faith. Right. And we need to be out of that. We need mm -hmm. to love people where they are. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. we. We approve of everything they do, but hearing them gives them worth, not right. approval. Absolutely. 
I don't always do that well because I want to not hear certain things, but you know, that's the reality. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's okay. God knows that wonderful process in our life, weak right. and elemental as it is. But he joins us in the journey and he mm -hmm. laughs at us along the way. Absolutely. But we're learning along the way. We are. And it's like kids. He knows we're his children and he loves us. Amen. So what do we got to lose, sister? Nothing at all, <laughs> It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you brought here to Lawrence County. Thanks and for doing this. And that you to spread yeah, the I'm gospel of, of Jesus. This is the horse whisperer, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a gentleman here who's been involved with the Sermon on the Mount, the Horse Whispers, Whispers Ministry for how long? About 20 years. About 20 years. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would. I'm Benham Stewart, singing Pines Plantation in Glenwood, Georgia. And uh, we've been in the horse sprint business all my life. I raised registered quarter horses and kind of zero in on the Palomino color. Wow, now Mr. Stewart, so this right here, being a part of this for so long and, and having raised horses, how easy or how difficult is it to kind of steer that mare the way Dr. Sterrett did today? Uh, Dr. Sterrett has a unique way of working with the horses and mm -hmm. God moves through him and through the horse to bring whatever message is necessary. I've seen him do this probably a hundred times or mm -hmm. more. I have never seen two of them that were exactly alike. Wow. Each horse dictates different things, and there are always people within the crowd that need to hear whatever it is he brings. Mm -hmm. And unlike what we get a lot of times, uh, Lou is talking about a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. Right. And uh, God is a spirit, so when we connect with him, we connect with him on a spiritual basis. Mm -hmm. It's a heart basis. Uh, a lot of people use mental ascent, and that really doesn't get it because that just says that I know that the gospel is true, mm -hmm. but I've never taken any action on mm -hmm. it. And Lou shows you through the horse, through the action and reaction of the horse, mm -hmm. your walk to the Father. And as he does that, uh, people see themselves in what's going on. I, I remember. Uh, one real young, about eight-year-old, mm -hmm. who reached up and pulled on his daddy's uh, shirt sleeves about three-quarters of the way through a performance and said, Daddy, I'm kind of like that colt. That. <laughs> and, uh, and he was very much like that colt right. that night mm -hmm. that we saw. But uh, we see that and hear that everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just neat how God has used Lou with the horses mm -hmm. to bring the gospel message, right. not in a church setting, uh, in a place where anybody can feel free to come. A lot of people are intimidated by the church, mm -hmm. uh, by the formality, the ceremony, and yet when they come out here, they can be free. And it's more about a relationship with Jesus than it is anything else. All mm -hmm. the formality and all will get you nothing if you don't have a personal relationship with the Father. Amen. And you know, and, and, and Dr. Sterrett said himself this about relationship. Yeah, it is. It and is. well, we certainly appreciate you, I mean, and the work that you've been doing and how you've been supporting his ministry for so many years. Well, we've really enjoyed doing it. I've uh, given horses into the ministry. He had one horse that we had, Palomino, by the name of Spotlight. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used him up till this last year, and he's 19 now, <laughs> and retired him. Mm -hmm. And he's got another young buckskin horse that is a really, really nice horse that comes from the C.S. Ranch in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I happen to know them well. And, and actually, <laughs> uh, the wife of one of the Davis sons right. there, his daddy, was a distant relative to us, and he's the one that I bought my first quarter horses from oh, wow. probably 60 years ago now. Did you say 60 years? Approximately, <laughs> that. Wow, that is wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, we thank you. I mean, you've raised some wonderful horses through the years, and supporting this ministry and the message that you see that people are, are receiving from it is wonderful. It's thank just you. awesome. It is. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you thank for you. being here. Thank you. Thank you.